Well, welcome to the Herman Fest, um, our, our celebration for, for Herman van Alphen's retirement. Whether from reading the words of the Buddha or, or those of George Harrison, um, I really should have been aware that all things do indeed pass. Still, um, it is hard to believe that you're really retiring, Herman, and even harder to imagine the Department of Asian Studies without you. Uh, we will miss your, your unmistakable presence, um, bestriding, and, I'm, and that really is the word, bestriding the halls of the hog building. <laughs> we will miss your much treasured willingness to take on committee and administrative work that is as necessary as it is underappreciated. We will miss your excellent, uplifting, even if not always uh, clearly parsed sense of humor. <laughs> We will miss conversations with you, especially the ones that begin in the middle of your thought and that may require some quick calculation to figure out what it is we're talking about. <laughs> we will miss your incredible memory for names, dates, and specific facts that has made you an embodied institutional memory. Um, but also, I should add, this is a somewhat disconcerting talent for those of us who would like to forget certain names, <laughs> dates, and specific facts. And we will very much miss your contributions to the academic life of the department and the university, and especially, of course, to the Hindi program. Herman came to UT as a graduate student in 1963, February 4th, 1963, right? Do you see what I mean about his memory? <laughs> um, he entered as a graduate student in linguistics, and he might have studied Japanese, but Hindi won him over, and the Hindi verb phrase became the subject of his dissertation. In 1968, he was, an appointed, uh, he was appointed an assistant professor in linguistics, and this was before he actually received his degree. Yes, those were different times. <laughs> um, in 1970, he migrated to the Department of Oriental and African Languages and Literatures, the aptly acronymed DUAL. Um, eventually, Herman rose to become the chair of DUAL from 1984 to 1991, um, although, as an aside and as a chair, I'm not sure that rise is exactly the direction by which one comes to be a chair. <laughs> but again, those were different times. <clears throat> um, even before he completed his terms as chair, he became the director of the language program of the American Institute of Indian Studies from 1990 to 1998. Uh, during that period, or more specifically in 1994, like a female octopus, Dual passed away as it hatched the departments of Asian Studies and Middle Eastern Studies. <laughs> you perhaps didn't know that female octopi die soon after the, the hatching of their little <laughs> octopuses. Um, anyway, uh, departments which, despite their change in name, really do no less. And since then, he has been a much treasured, much admired member of the faculty in Asian Studies. Um, there are a number of people who, who want to have a chance to speak, so I'll, I'll omit his more recent past and his present at the university, which is familiar to, to most in this room. Um, I won't mention his service as graduate advisor. Um, I won't speak of his longtime uh, service as member of the executive committee of the department. Um, I will not even touch upon his work as a Hindi teacher from 1968 to this academic year. And I won't say even one thing about his contributions to Hindi instruction and pedagogy, not only at UT, uh, but well beyond it. However, I do want to say how much we appreciate all these things that I have not said, and all the many other things I could have not said. But I do need to mention his current role as the first director of the Hindi Urdu flagship program um, the first and only federally funded program of its kind for the intensive study of Hindi and Urdu. Under Herman's guidance, the flagship has set sail through the waters of new curricula into the shifting sands of a new study abroad program, amid the seas of government and university bureaucracy, and now even within the storms of extended metaphor. <laughs> Again, Herman, on behalf of the Department of Asian Studies and of all your colleagues, both at UT and elsewhere, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for everything you've been. Uh, 
Um, and now I'd like to um, introduce Surrender Gumbier. I mentioned that uh, Herman had been head of the AIS language program. Um, he was succeeded, as I recall, by Surrender. Um, so they have known them, uh, each other for a very long time. And so please, Surrender. Thank you. I was thinking of the time, uh, finally it comes one day that you have to leave what you have been doing for a long time. I've been teaching a course in Hindu mythology recently, so I was thinking of the concept of time in that context. So there's a cosmic time that just flows perennially, uninterruptedly, without any segmentations. And then there's a worldly time in which, of which, you know, we are all part of, and then things do happen after 30 years, 40 years, then a time comes when you have to retire. And I retired two years ago, but I could not have believed that Herman Ji will ever retire. <laughs> when I came this morning and I met him, not actually this evening when I met him, my first question to him, are you really retiring? And he, he laughed and said, yes. Uh, I am, yes. But it's really unbelievable that this program, or even the Hindi program in this country, will be without Harman Van Alphen. I want to thank Dr. Sarah Green and others who have <coughs> provided me the opportunity to say a few words on this special, very special day. It's a day of celebration, a day to celebrate the long career of Professor Herman Van Alphen, his accomplishments, and his tall persona. I can describe Herman Van Alphen in four Sanskrit words, na bhuto na bhavishyati. And for those who do not understand this language, I can translate for you that a person like him has not happened and it's very unlikely that a person like him will again be there in the near future, you know. And I'm saying that based on some empirical facts that I want to place before you. I was confident that Barbara and children are looking forward to Harma's retirement, and Barbara has lined up quite a few things for him to take care of <laughs> after his retirement. But all those who have worked hard all their life are not going to sit idle. For, I don't. For academics in particular, retirement does not imply the end of the work. Academics continue to be busy even after retirement that as I say often to my friends, that now it's being busy without severe deadlines. We retire from one work in order to retire to something else. Herman and I have worked together on a number of projects over the last few decades. We have worked on many national committees, the American Institute of Indian Studies, National Foreign Language Center, Star Talk, Proficiency Guidelines Project, National Standards, Standards Project, and on and on. We have evaluated many programs, such as Defense Language Institute program, more recently, of Hindi and Urdu. We have written research papers together. And traveling extensively, both of us, I would say, not as much as, uh, as Herman does, but there, there are projects which we started in this country and we met in India just to take it, advance it to a, the next step uh, of completion in India. And then gradually we completed it. So we wrote some papers together. Harmanji was the chair of the AIS Language Committee for almost a decade. And after he stepped down from the position, I succeeded, I succeeded him in 1998. 
The help, guidance, and advice I got from him was enormous. I inherited from him an academically sound and robust program and was much easier for me to build on where he had left. AIS work was no easy. Administering almost a dozen programs spread all over India, but I learned the knack of doing it from Herman Van Alphen. There is no Hindi project in this country which does not have his contributions, or I should say, does not have the Hermanian touch. <laughs> Herman is the first one to introduce engaging and productive fun in language pedagogy by introducing the value of film songs for language learning. His textbooks have helped a generation of language learners in this country. More recently, the Hindi-Urdu flagship program is a very outstanding accomplishment and contribution that has brought University of Texas to the forefront in South Asia studies in this country. For it's the most prestigious responsibility in languages that an institution can be trusted with. Herman has directed the flagship program for many years now and is going to leave it with a team of best professionals in this country, everyone handpicked from London, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Jaipur, Lahore, and other places. <laughs> On a different note, Herman has an unmatched storehouse of Hindi and Urdu authentic materials, which I'm sure will generate many more projects <laughs> in the future, but with Barbara's permission, of course. <laughs> For the contribution and accomplishments, Herman personally has been honored multiple times in India and in the United States. More recently, he was the recipient of the Government of India honor in 2007 at the 8th World Hindi Convention in New York City. Herman's full immersion in Hindi has been an enviable thing. Here is one person I know who would always prefer to speak in Hindi even if Indians in India don't. <laughs> People whom he has met in India are so impressed with him that they do not forget him. It may be a person at the reception desk of a hotel or airline, an airline agent at the check-in counter at the airport. <laughs> Recently, my wife, who is Vijay Gambhir, who is teaching a business in the course at Penn this semester, wrote to a business journalist, Pankaj Pachauri, in India, <coughs> complimenting him for the wonderful discussions he has conducted on India's business matters in Hindi. He acknowledged the compliment and wrote back that if you need help for your business course, please contact Professor Herman Van Alphen of Texas. <laughs> His immersion in Hindi is so deep that I draw an analogy of him from Goswami Tulsidas Ramcharit Manas, where Goswami ji says, meaning that I, I see divinity in every particle of this universe. Taking a clue from this, I am tempted to say that Hindi may sab harman jani. In other words, Hindi and harman have become synonymous. Let me tell you an anecdote. We were checking out from a Calcutta hotel one time, and harman said something in Hindi which the person at the desk did not understand. Then Herman inserted an English word in his Hindi statement and repeated his statement. This time, the person at the reception desk did understand him and said, sir, I do understand Hindi. <laughs> Herman knows many languages. He knows Hindi, Urdu, Sanskrit, Russian, Dutch, French, Spanish, and maybe a few more in European languages that I don't know about. <laughs> we do not need to be told that knowing another language is not only good for our personal development, but it, is also, it also builds bridges between communities. It empowers us and empowers others. Herman is the model of this idea of multilingualism and multiculturalism. He is a wonderful human being and a fun professional to work with. I personally learned a lot from him. 
He has given a lot to the profession. I am not sure what we can give him in return. Harmanji, your best gift is your retirement. <laughs> I have heard from many friends and colleagues that life actually begins after retirement. This is the time when we can complete our unfinished projects. We can do gardening. We can travel, wash dishes at home, <laughs> va vacuum floors, cook, play with grandchildren, and so on. Dear Harmanji, you have our best wishes, and I'm sure we will be in touch through emails and through Skype. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. All these, all these years that we have been working together, I never had a chance to hug you. <laughs> I, I want to come and hug you today. Is that okay? Thank you. Punar Bhavami. Yeah, I, I understand hugging a Herman is, is good luck, too. <laughs> um, I mentioned that Surrender and, and, and Herman go back a while. Um, our next speaker can make even a better claim for a long-term relationship uh, with Herman. Um, Juliana von Olfen is Herman's daughter and, like her father, a scholar and teacher. Um, she is currently uh, in the Health Education Department at San Francisco State University, where she studies the effects of San Francisco's policies on women in jail and after release from jail. Uh, she is also the mother of two children, one of whom, Max, is here today, to, or was here today, <laughs> to help celebrate his grandfather, Juliana. It's great to be here. What a beautiful event. And it's such a pleasure to meet so many people that I've heard a lot about over the years and um, friends, colleagues, and former students of my father. Uh, I also want to thank uh, everybody who had a hand in organizing this celebration uh, of my father's long and illustrious career at the, here at the University of Texas at Austin, uh, particularly Sarah Green. But I know many others also had a hand in uh, organizing this, so thank you. So I have my father to thank for my unique birthplace. I was born toward the end of my family's year in Missouri, Uttar Pradesh, uh, when my father had a Fulbright um, to do his, complete his dissertation on the Hindi verb. So that's always exciting part of <laughs> my, my upbringing to say I was born in Missouri, not Missouri, <laughs> mind you. Um, so I wanted to share with you a few words about having grown up with a role model like my father. Uh, he's been a very important role model to me, as I know he has been to countless students, colleagues, and friends. Uh, perhaps this is obvious because I also grew up to become a professor like my father. Uh, but I didn't become a professor like my father simply because, because he did so I would. As a young child, I told a friend, my father has an HPD. Uh, I may not have known then the right order of the letters <laughs> um, or their meaning, but I already knew, even at the age of five, that my father was a great teacher, not only on campus, but also off campus. Uh, my father taught me everything about what being native Dutch meant to him. He brought me up speaking Dutch and fully embracing uh, Dutch traditions and customs. He read to me all his favorite Dutch children's books, sang to me all his favorite Dutch songs, and encouraged me to love all his favorite Dutch foods, except perhaps salt licorice, which I'm convinced was invented by the Dutch to distinguish those who are native Dutch from those who are not. Uh, as a family, we traveled extensively while I was growing up, which probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise to the, most of you. Um, I, uh, uh, we, 
I, I learned about different cultures and customs. In addition to Dutch, I learned French and some Spanish. But perhaps most importantly, my father taught me to truly love learning about different ways of living, doing, and talking, and to value difference just by itself. He taught me to love sharing things learned, finding newer and better ways of doing the same old thing, and to love traveling, since no one else I knew had a father who could take six to eight weeks off every summer to travel. So becoming a professor seemed to be one of the best, if not the best, ways to continue doing all of these things. I feel very lucky for the opportunities I've had in life because of who my father is, not merely a professor, but a lifelong learner, a world traveler, and an accomplished scholar and teacher. In retirement, I'm sure he will continue to be all of these things. To my father, all the best. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and now I'd like to introduce uh, Arun Prakash. Um, Arun is a teacher of Hindi at Belair High School in Houston. Um, and not just a teacher, for he's been named a master teacher by the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages. Um, he is the author of Namaste Ji, a textbook for the first two years of high school Hindi, um, for which Herman was a consultant. And there's one other important connection between Herman and him, but, uh, but I'll let Arun tell you about that. Arun? Namaste. Uh, <clears throat> I have not planned my speech and it's not written down. According to my wife, when I was driving uh, after uh, my class at University of Houston, uh, I asked my wife, uh, do I have your permission? Because I may have an opportunity to give a speech. So whenever I have to say something, I have to have her permission. That is a promise I made to her. So she said, yeah, go ahead. Uh, but do not write your speech because <clears throat> you have a lot of uh, unused memory in your mind because according to her I'm very special and I have a lot of hard drive that has never been used. So, <laughs> so she said, why don't you just put in there and uh, so that you'll be short. Uh, so <laughs> so um, what I want to say is that uh, when I started Hindi program, the first high school credit program in 1988 in Belair High School, uh, Harmanji found out about it in 1980. And right away, uh, he came to Houston uh, to, to meet with me, with uh, Dr. Richard Larivere. Uh, and he not only came, he came with money. He came with lots of teaching material because I had nothing. And uh, I, was, I started the program with $300. Uh, they were paying me for gas money because, and my drive was 35 miles each way. So <clears throat> Harmanji, I just want to tell you that uh, I did not plan, I'm a corporate consultant, I'm an MBA, you know that, and I never planned to, to be a Hindi teacher or professor, and believe me, if I had an, an MA, my father would have killed me for, for being an MA in Hindi, because all my brothers and sisters are engineers and doctors, and uh, for him, Hindi would have not been an education even. Uh, for him, when I, when I completed my MBA in 1975, and um, so my father said, what kind of education is that? Would you be able to find a job? My brother was in America, and he called him and said, Arun has no education, and uh, he will probably be needing your help to find a job. So please help me, uh, help him. So for, for my father, my MBA was not an education. And when my wife came to see me, the only wife I have for 32 years, uh, <laughs> so, so she said, She's a PhD uh, in microbiology from Cambridge University. And when she came, my father said, how would you marry an un undereducated person? You think you will get along with him very well? So <laughs> that was the case. So when I came here and I started becoming uh, teaching Hindi, uh, I didn't tell my father <laughs> that I'm teaching Hindi. I didn't. So um, Harmanji, I want to tell you that I am in Hindi for 21 years because of you. There's, there's no other reason. There's no two reasons for it. And, and whatever work I have done uh, in Hindi is plain and simple, is your inspiration. And whatever I do is because of you. Because I did not plan to be in Hindi. 
when I came to US. Now you have put me into it, and you have to take me out of it also. <laughs> so today, today we have four Hindi programs, studied programs uh, in Houston. Houston is the only city in America that has two high school credit programs and two university programs, Rice University and, and University of Houston. And because of you, I succeeded to start all four of them and taught them to accept the, the one that they started last year, Rena Jain is teaching at uh, Clements High School, but I gave her the, the training and she's teaching and getting the guidance. So uh, it's just because of you. So, uh, and I want to tell you that Harmanji is also graduate from the high school I'm teaching, Belair Senior High School. And when I started the program at Rice University in 1993, I found out that he graduated from Rice also. So when are you coming back to University of Houston because I'm teaching there now? <laughs> uh, on behalf of uh, Bella High School, and I'm really truly, truly honored to be here. I just drove and I have to go back in two hours or less maybe uh, because um, that's my wife's order. So I, there's no choice. I have no choice. On behalf of the uh, Bella Senior High School and University of Houston and whatever you have done for me, my wife, we are very fond of you, you know that. and the. Uh, Bella High School is very fond, every, every kid is very fond of you, you just came two, three months ago. So on behalf of the uh, Bella High School and University of Houston, I have a little something to, to give it to you. And I also want to show you that when I asked my wife, give, give me something so that I can give it to doctor, and he gave me, she gave me this. It says the joy of being a kid. Yeah. <laughs> So I got this, and will you please give me the honor of giving this to you? It's on behalf of the Beller High School. In, in my hometown, it is the tradition that an intellectual, an educator, is always honored by giving him a shawl. So I have a, and this is from me and my wife, Pushpa. She's not here and she regrets it very much, but I hope you'll accept. Thank you, Aaron, and please thank your wife. Okay. Um, now I'd like to introduce uh, a couple of Herman students. Um, the first, um, Ishrat Jaffrey, um, who would like to read something. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to thank you for the um, opportunity to, um, to share my um, feelings and my, my writings at this time with you. And uh, the, uh, my poem is in Urdu, in Urdu and uh, the title is Professor uh, Harman Van Alfin Sahab Ki Nazr. It's, it's a tribute. Tu ke hai izo vikare dars gah. Aap ki jazas se? Tu ke hai izo vikare dars gah. Vakf har saad bakare dars gah. Tu jaha bhi jaye honge ham rakab buwe gul Range Bahare Darska or Ek Junune Ishko Kare Shok Bas 
ایک جنون عشق و کار شوق بس کہیے جس کو کاروبار درس کا اور جا نشینوں کو پیام تہنیت جا نشینوں کو پیام تہنیت سونپنا تیرا یہ کار درس گاہ اور یہ دلوں کی بادشاہی کا جہاں ہے عجب شے اقتدار درس گاہ اور علم سے کس کو سبک دوشی ملی علم سے کس کو سبک دوشی ملی گو نہ ہو شانوں پہ بار درس گاہ اور وقت ایک گنتی ہے ماہو سال کی ٹوٹتا کب ہے حسار درس گاہ اور پشتے مجنو سے ہے یہ محمل بندھا ساتھ چلتی ہے نگار درس گاہ اور بزم کے باہر بھی ہے دعا دشا بزم کے باہر بھی ہے دعا دشا ٹوٹتا کب ہے خمار درس گاہ اور تو کہ وہ استاد جس کی ذات ہے اعتماد و اعتبار درس گاہ اور تو سراپا علم سر تاپا عمل تو سراپا علم سر تاپا عمل تجھ سے ہے حسن بہار درس گاہ اور تیری دلکش مسکراہٹ کے اسیر تیری دلکش مسکراہٹ کے اسیر یہ ہنسی نقش و نگار درس گاہ اور تو کہ ایک مکتب ہے اپنی ذات میں کیوں نہ ہو پھر افتخار درس گاہ اور ہے یہ دانش گاہ تیرا شاہکار ہے یہ دانش گاہ تیرا شاہکار اور تو ہے شاہکار درس گاہ بہت بہت شکریہ Thank you, Hishra. Um, and finally, I'd like to introduce a number, or another of uh, Herman's students, um, Betty Shaw. Hello. I'm happy to be able to sort of represent the legions of former students of Herman's. I've known him since the fall of 1970 when I first started taking Hindi. Um, I took it just for fun. I couldn't believe Hindi was offered at the University of Texas. So it fit into my schedule and I took it and I had no idea that it was going to bring the life experiences, um, the career paths, the academic um, life that it brought to me. Um, I actually tried to learn, I don't, you may not know this, Herman, but I tried to teach myself Hindustani when I was 11, <laughs> out of a book. I don't think I did very well, but you can see the interest was deep, and, uh, and I finally got to learn it when I came to college. I'm just going to keep this brief. I want to say two main things. I could, I could talk for a while, but I'm going to say two main things. Two memories. Well, one is a memory of Herman as a professor, so as a former student, uh, I want to say something about his professorship. He is infectious enthusiasm for Hindi really affected all of us and um, you know quite a few of us went on in Hindi and took more than the basic two years of language. Um, class was just so much fun. Back in those days, back in the dark ages, there were no Indian students in the Hindi classes. And I know Herman is going to correct me on this, but I think there were three sections of first semester Hindi when I took it and we were all non-Indian kids who were interested in India and interested in Hindi. Okay, so he's got to teach us a lot of sounds that we don't know. We haven't grown up hearing these sounds like the Indian children of today. Uh, and that was quite a challenge, I think, because we just didn't know how to make these sounds. And so my, big, my biggest memory was from the earliest days of class when he was trying to teach this to us and of course there was the script which I always thought was a lot of fun well okay Herman's standing at the front of the class and he says 
come on, you can do it. It's easy. Arda, arda, arda. <laughs> Which, if you don't know, is the retroflex R, well, as is used in the word sardi, for example. And that was very difficult for, for us American kids. You can do it. Arda, arda, arda. <laughs> this big old Dutch guy, you know, up there. So anyway, he was, he was a great professor. I studied um, other, I took language and society in Asia, I remember, but mostly it was Hindi classes. And the other thing I want to say about Herman is speaks to him, him as a person, not just as a professor, and that is, I think I'm correct in saying that Herman has never forgotten a student. He is amazing. Over the years, and we got to be colleagues and friends, as well as professor and student, I would update him on some students that I kept in touch with, and he would update me on others, many of whom I had forgotten. And uh, I just have never known anyone who could probably tell me who all was in my first semester in the class from 1970, if I pushed him. So um, on behalf of all your students, Herman, Thank you for a wonderful learning experience. Thank you for your friendship, Dhanyavad. Have a wonderful retirement. Thank you. Thank you. Let me, let me depart from the script for a second. Um, we, um, Max Bruce has, has volunteered to, to translate um, Ishrat's poem for, for those of us among the Hindi handicapped in the Urdu unwashed. Um, <laughs> Max, dictionaries and some other tools of the trade, but I'll just translate the first couple of lines. So the, the opening line, uh, you who are the honor, the dignity, the esteem of this university, you who uh, you are devoted uh, at every moment to the work of the university, you who uh, in your own being are yourself a, a school, why shouldn't you be the pride and honor of this university? Uh, this university, this, this place of knowledge is your masterpiece, and you are a masterpiece of this university. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Um, and now with the able assistance, <laughs> yes, don't look behind the curtain. Um, <laughs> Herman, could you come? Yes, no, this is. <laughs> I feel like Van White. <laughs> <laughs> yes, turn the letters. Great, thank you. From, yes, from the Asian Studies Department, the Hindi Urdu Flagship Program, um, the South Asia Institute, from all of us, we wanted to give you this, this trophy at least as, as a kind of, well, so you won't forget us. Yes, <laughs> you spelled my name right. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> we try. Thank you very much. Well, let's see, let me see. I wrote a few notes here um, in case, because uh, I'm kind of overwhelmed by all this. Um, I just want to, um, well, one thing I wanted to mention is that this is the 50th anniversary. The real celebration is that Hindi has now been taught for 50 years at UT. And uh, it doesn't quite match the University of Pennsylvania, but still it's, uh, it's uh, among, uh, among, um, among the, um, uh, the oldest programs. I also want to thank everybody who has crossed my path in the past. Um, in the beginning, my mentors, especially Edgar Polome, Winfred Lehman, and Ali Desiree. 
Um, my colleagues, uh, Mike Shapiro, I first met, if I recall, at the Association for Asian Studies in New York City in 1972. Is that your recollection? <laughs> I think it was earlier. Earlier? Well, anyway. And of course, um, of course, uh, Surendra Gambhir and many others. Um, I also want to recognize Senator Pascal, who came as a receptionist to our department in 1980, and for 30 years she was sort of a mainstay in the department, and we still all miss you. So, uh, uh, so I want to make that. Then. And uh, also, uh, after I was chair, all the other chairs who have been so supportive, uh, first Rodney Moog, then Patrick Olivelle, and now Joel Brereton. Uh, and the final phase of my work, it's kind of interesting, when I first came as a graduate student, I was, um, I, I was working in a machine translation program in, uh, here at the University of Texas in the Linguistics Research Center. And uh, that was funded by the feds. Now I'm finishing up as uh, <laughs> director of the, uh, of the Hindi flagship program, also funded by the feds, and also the same department, which shall remain uh, anonymous since it's defense. And, um, um, and uh, I also, of course, want to uh, thank all my colleagues in the flagship who have made my job so uh, so easy the last few years, um, um, Rupert Snell, Sarah Green, Akbar Heder, and Jishnu Shankar, and all the other people working there, Martha Berry, uh, uh, Elise Abernathy, and so on. So I just want to thank all of you. It's been a wonderful evening, and uh, I certainly didn't deserve this, but, uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but thank you very much.